Hey everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology. Just a quick intro today and then we're jumping straight into the amazing collaboration that I got to have with Lewis from Physics Online. In this video we go through a range of practical and uncertainty math skill questions that are relevant for A-level biology but also for A-level physics. So take a look. Uncertainty is a math skill that comes up in both biology and physics A-level so we can have a go at some questions now. So we've got a ruler that's got graduations of one millimeter. What be the associated uncertainty when taking a measurement with it so, so yeah. first thing is they've actually told us here this is a measurement rather than a reading which means we've got two points of uncertainty and our uncertainty at one point is always half of the smallest graduation so that would be 0.5 but because we've got two points of uncertainty we need to times that so it stays as one so we've got an uncertainty at the beginning an uncertainty at the end, and therefore the total uncertainty in that measurement, because it's got a beginning and an end, must be one. Yeah. So one millimetre, there we go. Next then is calculating the percentage error for a measurement using the ruler of six millimetres. So we've measured six millimetres. We now need to take into account we've got one millimetre uncertainty. What is that as a percentage? of our measurement. So I'm going to say uh, percentage u, that's just like my made up symbol, so this is my mm -hmm. percentage uncertainty, is going to be equal to this uncertainty in the measured value divided by the measured value, so that's just 1 over 6, but then we want it as a percentage, Yeah. so I'm going to multiply it by 100, and I think for something like this I'm always going to rely on my calculator. Oh, me too, so 1 divided by 6 times 100, so we've got 16.66667. Yeah, I think, though, that's probably too many numbers to write down. Yeah. So I'm just going to go for 17. Yeah, round it to a whole number. And 17%. there we go. percent Good. We're going to have a go at a practical question that includes math skills that are needed for both physics and A-level biology. But also there's some GCSE elements in here as well. So have a go at it with us. So we've got a massive table of data, lots of numbers, lots of new stuff. But we've got different trials that a student did when they looked at how far a ruler falls. So this is that required practical from GCSE Biology where it's the reaction times and the ruler drop and catching it. And we've been told that a student has done that four times and these are the distances on the ruler before they caught it in millimetres. They've then used those distances and converted them into reaction times using this set data they were provided with. And the first thing we have to do then is calculate the percentage uncertainty in the measurement of trial one, table one. So this one here. And I think there's a lot of information there in the question and it's trying to just identify which bit of data you need, which mm. table. And once you've done that, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so they've taken this uh, ruler, they've dropped it through somebody else's hands and then they've looked at how far it's fallen and that's then going to be linked to the time. So calculate the percentage uncertainty. I would say for this one, because we're measuring to the nearest millimetre yep. with that ruler, we're going to have one as our absolute uncertainty yeah and we're going to divide that by the measured value which in this case is 79 millimeters and to work out the percentage uncertainty this is going to be equal to 1 divided by 79 multiplied by 100 you've got it there already 1.2658 and i'm going to give that as 1.3 percent so i'm just going to give my answer to two significant figures which i think is appropriate yep agree so then we've got following the ruler drop method, it's not possible to react in less than 45 milliseconds. So just one reason for the result in trial three. So they caught it much shorter distance, which would then actually be less than 45 milliseconds. So we've got to suggest why that might be the case or suggest question. Yeah, so it's a suggest question. There's one reason that they've highlighted in bold. Mm. And it could just be that they started moving their fingers before they should have done. Yeah. And then they just got very lucky that they actually managed to hit the ruler as it started to fall. So yeah. it could be they've kind of jumped the gun. Just there's guess. just kind of, yeah, this kind of sort of <laughs> guess, this kind of full start. Yeah. And that could be one of the reasons. Yeah, I'd go for that. Okay, and then final question. One student estimated the length of the NERTH pathway involved in this reaction was 170 centimetres. Use all the information to calculate the mean 
speed of nerve impulse transmission exclude anomalies okay meters per second as well yeah so do you want to do this one you go for it because you don't like my biological formula for it so <laughs> okay so i'm going to say in physics even when you did gcse we use v to represent the speed of something and that's going to be equal to the distance traveled or the displacement divided by time okay so this is just a shorthand way of writing it so i know that the speed is distance over time okay the distance is 170 centimetres, which is then a tricky thing because you've got to make mm. sure we convert it into standard units. Yep. And we've they got want it as meters. meters per second. So that's going to be 1.70 metres. Yep, just divide by 10. But the time is something we don't know. And I guess that's where we're going to have to go back over here. Okay. It does say to exclude anomalies. So we need to use this table here, the distances, and convert it into a time. So it's going to be our reaction time. Okay. And they have said the mean. So for these four trials, we're working out the mean, but they said exclude anomalies. And we've got 79, 96, 95. So I'd say that's an anomaly. Absolutely. Excluding. That's the mistake that somebody's done. So to work out the mean, we just add the numbers together. Uh, so 79 plus 96 plus 95 divide that by three and that gives us a time of 90, 90. but it's 90 millimeters so 90 millimeters which isn't the time but i guess we can then relate this to the table over here yeah so 90 millimeters is 136 milliseconds but we need to convert that into seconds and i've just written that down as 0 0.136 because we just take this number and we divide it by a thousand to make it a millisecond yeah. or to make it a second and therefore that's 0 0.136. Now I can't do that in my head. Um, so again, if you could uh, do the honors. So 1.70 meters divided by 0 0.136 seconds is equal to 12.5. And I'm gonna write it down here again, 12.5 uh, meters, meters per, per second. second. And that's it, Cool. done. Yeah. I hope you found that helpful and if you did, you can check out this video next all about uncertainty for A-level biology. And keep a lookout for even more collaborations that I've got with Physics Online over on their YouTube channel.